we already had one of these printers for a longer time in our office, a small printer, to use it for model making, etc. And we noticed actually there's really a lot of advantages to 3D printing and digitally manuf digital manufacturing that could be very interesting uh, in regards to city making and on a lot of different levels. And then we did some research and we discovered that actually there wasn't really a lot of research uh, involved with architecture and 3D printing and uh, that there also wasn't really yet a large 3D printer. So that led us to design and build this printer ourselves and that's basically how this project uh, started three years ago. What you'll see here is actually not how the final house will look like. Basically the whole time the model is still being modified so this is already like the fifth model we've printed and still constantly changing. But this is actually how we're going to construct it. We're printing these kind of sort of, uh, what is it, lattice glue that we extrude. And then we're filling it off with a second material, actually a lightweight uh, concrete, so that it becomes stronger. The structure, it creates strength, but it also really creates ornament. So we're really playing like how do aesthetics and, uh, and structure relate. If you zoom in, you see that there's a lot of different uh, design aspects there and a lot of new uh, ideas on how you can actually construct housing. It made me realize that we want to make something that on the one hand people can relate to still as a house and then if you come closer you actually start to see all the new positive aspects of it and all the advantages. What is nice is that the second print is already a much a lot more refined so you really see the transformation. And um, my colleague, he made a nice uh, reference. He said you can compare it a bit to the first uh, digital cameras. They also had like uh, 50 pixels. And then after like uh, two years, it was already 500,000 pixels. And now it's so this is also a bit how you should see this. This is really the first stage of uh, uh, a really very early print. This is the entire print bed. So it can print two by two by three and a half. In the second we're printing, we're actually taking the top out, so then we can print like five and a half meters uh, tall. Upstairs there's a big funnel where we keep the material in, and the extruder that then uh, basically uh, pushes the material together, and then it becomes fluid up to about 170 degrees, and it goes via this tube. Uh, that's actually a heated tube, and then it goes through this nozzle that then, like layer by layer, uh, uh, builds up the, the print. One statement that you can make is that actually plastic is too precious to let go to waste. Because it's super strong, it's waterproof and you shouldn't you know, throw it in the ocean where it becomes one soup. You should actually maybe print houses with it because it's a very solid and in that regard also durable material. And one thing that we're really fascinated by is what if we can actually recycle plastics and basically do a kind of urban mining where you just mine the cities and all the waste that you have and print, um, use it for print material. The building industries, is, it's not nice to say but it's true, it's actually one of the most polluting industries. Um, and uh, with this printing you actually only use the material that you need. There's really no waste. You put the material in the printer and the, the material you don't need, you just keep it for another time. We really have this sort of dogma that no room can be the same and every print should be different in order to really force ourselves to, uh, to, uh, to really improve the design. Because it's a test project, but really by doing, and it's also not a problem if it fails, that people are actually quite uh, unafraid to also share this knowledge and just try it. In general, I think 3D printing very much relates to context and you can really design uh, without a lot of waste without uh, any you know, uh, scary smoke fumes or anything. And it really makes architecture and design very personal. So that's also why we thought a canal house. I mean, we are not in Cape Town or in Rio, we're in Amsterdam, and this is our context. So let's make really a kind of new uh, typology for the future that at the same time is very known to, uh, to us. Mm -hmm.